Hello there reason people, Buddha here and welcome to my channel and today we're going to be setting up Electric Pandas Automator or Automata, I don't know, however you want to pronounce it, basically it's a cellular based kind of MIDI sequencer, it's in a VST3 format and I thought hey this would be a good little video um, to get this up and running, um, obviously to work in reason and I'm going to take it as far as getting things like the host transport in sync so you can actually get it up and running and I might do a separate video actually on the actual usability and how we can actually really utilize this and do something creative with it. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is obviously download the version I actually need which happens to be the uh, Windows version uh, then I'm just going to go and save it off in the location where I like. Once it's downloaded, admittedly on Windows we get in this little prompt it doesn't recognize the program so let's go with more information and say run anyway because I trust Panda. Then we've got this little installer program tells you where I'm going to install it to which is obviously the box and the program files common files VST3 which is standard on Windows so it's going to click on install it does it very very quickly there's not a lot to see and that's it installed so what the process is going to be is we're going to take Automata and we're going to actually run it inside an application called Kershview. Kershview itself will take the MIDI data and send it back out and into Reason. It'd be a bit like it's been a, a MIDI controller and from there we can obviously point it at an instrument. Now Kershview is actually quite powerful and you can actually use other applications as well. You don't have to actually use Kershview. If I was using something like Voltage Modulus, something I like, and it's a monotone um, MIDI signal rather than say poly uh, a signal, um, we can actually even use audio cables uh, from Voltage Modular and pass that back into Reason and then we convert the audio into CV for our noting gate data. But this is kind of my preferred route which I like. So Kershview itself comes as a standalone version or it comes as an AU, an LV2, a VST and has a VST2 64-bit and a VST3. It also supports inside it so it can actually support up all these different um, formats obviously depending on your OS. Please note, because I always get asked this question, it will not convert, it's not a bridge, it will not convert 32 to 64 bit VSTs. It's all 64 bit. To download it, it's a simple click on your download. And then obviously you just need to select your operating system that you wish to have. And it's a simple run program and you run it. So this is actually Kershview running on my system. Don't worry about what you can see in the background. Um, when you run it in the standalone version, it remembers your last settings. You have to run this up as standalone to start with because it's the only way you can scan plugins. So from this view menu, and we're gonna select plugin manager, and I need to do a scan. Now, because I know uh, I've only updated my VST3s, I'm just gonna to go to an update my VST3s. So this is gonna take quite a while to do, but with the magic of this video, we can speed this right up. So all I'm going to do now is click on close. Then under the plugins, all I'm going to do is search for it. So it's uh, automated and yep, yeah, cool. So there it is straight away. And let's bung it over here. And I might as well test it. And it's actually opened up on the other window. So let me grab that. Here it is. Um, looks rather small on my 4K screen at the moment. So there we go. Actually, I've actually got a key. So I'm just going to quickly get the key. Full version unlocked. I say I've never used this before, so I don't know. And by the way, these little controls at the top, that's actually do a curse for you. That's not to do with this actual product. So, so I'm just clicking around on the, on the logo and see if there's anything there. Sometimes people hide stuff in their logos and they haven't. Um, I'll work out how to resize this a little bit later. But very, very quickly, we can actually over here, what this is telling me is there's a couple of audio in, there's a couple of audio out. Uh, maybe it's just passing audio through. But what's important, this orange one's a MIDI, so I could throw that MIDI one over there straight onto this uh, Dream Synth. I'm not sure how I've got OBS configured. I'll find out in a second. I'm just going to click run and see what happens. Right, we're going to double check OBS. So we're actually up and running, as you can hear. What I'm going to actually do now is let's actually jump down into uh, Reason and uh, get this working within Reason because that's the whole point of this video. I'm using Reason 12. Um, you can do this from Reason 9.5 and above because Kershview is a VST2 as well as a VST3. So obviously in 9.5 Reason you can use a VST2. So I'm just going to come in here. In fact, let me uh, zoom in first because my 
do this and then try and zoom in, I lose the window because it's a floating window. So there's Curse View. And we just, I'm gonna load up the VST2 version in here. It makes no difference. Click on the open. It's gonna open up on the other window. It's gonna quickly grab it across. There we go. Uh, remember, you've got to get onto this little handle down here and you're gonna drag and open this up. And the reason you're gonna drag and open this up, as you can see, oh, it hides these little things down the bottom. So this is your audio out. This happens to be a MIDI out, but this MIDI out is purely for other doors and it's no good for uh, reason. Over in the plugin section, I can obviously double click on here and then start typing in the name rather than look at a big long list. There it is. So it's going to grab that and pull that in. Bosch got that. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to output devices. I've got loads and loads of MIDI output devices set up. The one I'm interested in is going to be the simple loop MIDI port, which is a simple loop back. I've got loads of other loop back. These all actually do loop back actually into reason a lot of these. So I was going to grab that one for the moment. You can see sometimes this, is, this app does put things on top of each other, so beware of that because it could be hiding. And I'm just going to grab that and I'm going to plug that into there. What uh, another silly little tool, what Curseview has, if I just type in the word monitor, you can see we've got this MIDI monitor. I'm just going to pull that in as well and it's going to open up on another screen. So let me go and grab that very, very quickly. And here it is. So it's just, just a very, very, very simple monitor. But what I like about obviously this monitor is I can obviously grab this plug it into this here as well. Let me go and grab, hey, there we go. There's automate as well. So let's go and grab this. So if I was to hit run, he says, and then you can see we've got MIDI coming. So that's that's the main thing. So the reason I'm gonna quickly add myself a device, uh, go something basic, like just something simple like the IDE8 to start with. Make sure it's got MIDI focus. You can hear it's going already. And so this is now coming across and playing this. I might just turn this monitor off for the, monitor off for the moment because we don't need it. And also we can click on stop there. So obviously the, the final bit of the puzzle really here is ideally what we want to be able to do is obviously push play on here and make sure that this actually starts playing and all the rest of it. So in actually Curse View itself, what you've got is at the very top here, you need to make sure that you actually turn that onto external. Now, some devices, um, you have to come in and actually make sure that they're set to um, an, like an external source as well. I don't know if you do on this one, let's find out. No, you don't. So as you can see, I'm pushing play and stop here and we're starting and stopping the um, Automata uh, from Reason. And that was the whole purpose of this particular video is obviously to get all these bits and bobs working. I think what I'm going to very, very quickly do now is just do a little bit other configuration because I haven't actually played with this at all. This is the first time <laughs> what you've seen is how I've actually seen it myself. So I want to see how I can, if I can resize this in curse view or if this is a curse view issue um, and have just a quick play around and then I'll come back and sort of show you maybe what we can actually do with it. So before we actually move on, this is the loopback MIDI software I actually use. I've put the link in the description. For Mac users, you've got it built in. You're very, very lucky. Um, obviously for Windows users, there's plenty of other loopbacks you can use. You don't have to actually have to use this one. I like this one. Um, under the same particular developer, they've got a network version, so you can actually run MIDI across your network as well, which is absolutely fantastic. Once you've got it actually up and running, this is kind of what it looks like. You should only, if I remember rightly, it's been years and years and years ago since I've actually installed this, uh, you just get that one little port set up and none of these are set up. If it's not set up at the top, you literally just come down here, type in the name and you click your plus sign and that's it, it created. Under the advance, I've never, ever, ever, in all the years I've run this, had to touch that at all. There's a little about screen and obviously you can obviously do a little bit of a donate to the person. When this is actually running in Windows, you'd actually, and if you click on the actual close button, that doesn't actually close it off, it drops down into your taskbar, and it's obviously a little icon in there running in the background. Uh, now it's actually running in the background, what we need to do inside Reason is, we set it up as a, a controller. So it's now a MIDI port, we come along and we say, hey, we want to set up a controller. This one here happens to be a MIDI keyboard, and as you've noticed, I've actually got it set up twice, one for the keyboard and one for the controls and that I deliberately do it separately so it means I can actually push that towards an instrument and I can push that towards effects and everything else and I can do it via mappings rather than having to use a remote override. And it is just a simple case of clicking on the add manual and then selecting your surface controller 
Um, if you're using multiple MIDI channels, you can obviously go down to my particular controllers and you'll notice obviously we've got MIDI aware controllers down there. Um, there's nothing stopping you really going into the other manufacturer. And obviously you can select your MIDI controllers from there. And obviously down here in your MIDI port, you'll actually should start to see your, oops, need to scroll down. There we go, there's my loop MIDI port. So you just select that, click OK, and off you go. And that's it ready to be locked out to instruments. Obviously when you do create anything under the here, do make sure that these are not a master keyboard. If you make these a master keyboard, then you can never lock them to an instrument because obviously we can right click and lock these devices and then we can go off and point a different MIDI port to somewhere else and right click and lock it. If it's a master keyboard, you can't do that. So, there's a little piece I put together. Literally in about 45 minutes, I've actually managed to slap this together. Um, yes, I'm using a lot of presets, and uh, yep, yeah, these are a lot of pandas, instruments, and players, devices. Uh, I'm actually using the side reason. So I'm using the automata to actually fire off a signal, and I'm actually bringing it into my key control. So I actually launched this uh, combinator not too long ago. And this is a way where we can actually control the actual input of a MIDI flow. So as it comes down the stack, I've decided I'm firing it off. I'm actually pushing it into a scales and chord to actually create myself a chord. I'm then using my key control to actually limit what we're actually getting as an output from that, um, pushing that through an arpeggiator, and obviously that's producing sort of some of the, the main high sound. I'm also taking a that signal and pushing it over to the bass line. And so the bass line is actually being controlled by this compulsion. So compulsion, um, if you've watched many of my uh, other videos, you would know, I think this is really the king of arps in the music industry, um, not just in reason. I, you know, even in the VST world, there isn't much which even comes close to this. I think I can think of one which has a few extra bells and whistles that this doesn't, but this has many more bells and whistles. That one doesn't have it. So, you know, so I have this one up at the top. Um, so where was I? I'm getting confused. So yeah, so this is actually an arpeggiator, but that's producing the bass line, what I, I like to do. The uh, little beat map over here is producing a little drum pattern, but it's actually being controlled via the actual CC signals, which are coming from the automata. So that's actually got some CC signals which are coming in, controlling these controls up here, and then that's, that's why you can actually see that moving around. So, you know, there's a lot coming from here, which is obviously producing the actual sounds which, or producing the notes and the triggers which are coming in and coming through actually into Reason. And you know, it's it was very straightforward of really just locking one device um, and then obviously I've spanned from there, um, which you've probably seen, or if people who follow my channels, we've seen in many, many other videos where I actually do explode things out. And I think the result for quite a short period of time isn't too bad. Let's zoom in and have a right old good old chat about Automata. And I've got extra zoom on here, so I should be able to try and squeeze it all on the screen. There we go, I think it's all there. So at the moment, this is for test purposes only, so you may notice I've got all my triggers set, so don't set it like that. I'd say this is purely for testing. Um, what I found is I could set all these up, turn all my rules off, turn all my seeds on, and I look, I get myself a, a constant signal coming through, so that way I can go back to whatever application you're using, in my case reason, and I can go around and I can go and check all the um, all the all the different settings at the maximum, and then I could set it up in such a way that there was nothing say down this column here, and I was only activating this one column, and nothing else is activating, so I could go and check all my minimums. So it's it's very good that we can come here, and this is by the way is your output. So this is going to be uh, your trigger. So you've got a trigger going out. So it doesn't matter how many triggers you've got set, that's going out. I'll talk about the pitch and how it works out the pitch in a minute, but that's your pitch output, velocity, and you may notice that velocity is like 174, well, 127 is the maximum, so 
I'm assuming this is the MIDI well, so it's going to condense that down. Um, so where have I got to? So that was duration, that would be your duration slide. And then we're coming down to a hold, which I haven't played with a hold yet. Then we've got a couple of CVs, which I played with. And uh, yeah, and that would be it. So that's your four CVs would be at the end. As we're actually over here, very, very quickly, we've got this rate. Uh, can I, yes. So I've got to be careful, my Zoom program zooms the screen around. So there's there's quite a few different rates going down. I will go down, it's gonna move it down as you can see. So you've got a quite a nice selection there of what you can choose your rate's gonna be. You've got this like reset. So what will happen is you'll have obviously a seed set up and all the rest of it. I've got a feeling um, it's repeating the same patterns depending on your seed and all the rest of it. And this reset will actually push it back into a reset. So it means that you can come up with a nice pattern and it should keep repeating itself. Um, again, I need to fully that I've, I've gone off on a slightly different tangent <laughs> as I was playing with this stuff. Um, again, I had all my triggers set and I had everything else set so I could work out what each of these actual lights are doing. So if I was to say to come down here, it doesn't matter which column I choose on. Um, the first one, if I was to highlight that, because you can see there's something else highlighted, that would actually equal one. So in fact, one plus one should be actually equal two, so that's not a very good one. So let's actually go for, let's say CC numbers here. Here we go, I've got CC zero. So, sorry, or data values zero. You've got to remember this is um, digital, so zero actually does actually mean something quite positive uh, in the digital world. So by hitting that one, that's gonna equal one, so a one would be outputted. If I was to highlight two of these, that would be a three, because it'd be one plus two. So we're looking at bits. So it's gonna be one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, and then obviously that's our seven bits, MIDI world, and then it obviously goes a lot higher than that. Now, just because I'm talking about the bits as, as one, two, four, eight, in fact, if I come over here and do that there and that there, that's now four and that's now eight. But because this is highlighted and this is highlighted, this is highlighted, and this isn't highlighted, you're only gonna be adding your four, two, and one together, so that would give you seven, so you only have, um, seven on top of whatever your base number is, which happens to be zero, so it will be true a true seven. But as you can see, they don't actually have to be right next to each other like this. This is me actually experimenting when I was uh, playing around with that particular one. So that's how it actually works. And it's, it's that simple as it comes out. As I say, I haven't really played en enough around with the seed and, and the rules to work out exactly how it really is affecting everything else going on, but that's all part of the fun and, and process of what we're actually uh, have been doing. Um, it's quite funny. Obviously, when I was actually looking at this, I thought, oh, that's the other thing I was thinking about doing. Uh, with the CC numbers, I've got some extra CC numbers. And I was thinking, well, I could actually take them CC numbers, come up into this combinator and start controlling uh, my scales uh, and my keys and uh, play around with that as well. And I thought, one other thing I was gonna do, I'm gonna swap these two plays around because of the way they're working and that might give me a slightly different result as well. Hey, so there we go. Right, I really am waffling, but that's me. If you watch my videos, uh, I like to waffle and I like to say, well, thank you very much. I hope you have as much fun as I have actually had so far with this uh, Automata. It's, um, it is a bit of a, a good, good fun. I like things which are nice and simple. Um, I find when things get really, really complex, it takes the fun away. I like it. I like to work with like a random LFO. Hey, hey, I can't go worse than that. But this is really quite nice because of the way I can actually just sort of decide on a few things and it's pumping that data out the other end. So it's quite nice and random for me. I am waffling, sorry. Thank you for watching. And I'm gonna say bye for now.